My bread maker just arrived and I'm really excited because I've been waiting for it all day. And so I am going to unpack it out of the box and so we can see what's in here. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to share a little bit about why this is the one that I chose because, you know, when you start looking for bread makers, there's just a ton of different options out there. So I'm going to share that with you and then hopefully I'm going to bake a loaf of bread. So I'm excited to give it a try and let's go ahead and get it open. Okay, look, I'll give you a little view there. So the first thing, a pink um, oven mitt, and I, I like pink, so I'm good with this. And a user's manual and a get started guide. And I hope there's recipes. Um, you know, some of the reviews said there wasn't recipes and some of them said that there were. And it looks like there are recipes here in the user's guide, so that's good. I was hoping that. So I had, I've had a bread maker before, like way back probably, um, I don't even want to say what years, but probably like in the 80s, I had a bread maker. And um, I don't have it anymore, but I have been looking at bread makers since probably this time last year. And it took me this long to finally decide that I was gonna get one. And like I said, I was gonna tell you why I chose this one. Let me lay this box down so I can get it out of here. Um, but the KDS had um, good reviews. They have several different models. And so I guess my biggest issue was trying to figure out which model that I wanted to get because I decided kind of right off the bat that I wanted to get the KBS. And the main reason for that was that it's pan, the pan that you bake the bread in is um, ceramic coated instead of like your normal nonstick teflon coating and i i liked that about it that was the main thing that i liked about that this one that and my other thing that i start that i wanted when i started looking into a bread maker was i wanted the loaf pan that's this way instead of the tall one and this one had that also this one has nine different settings but let's go ahead and open up the inside there's like a little packet of stuff and here is that loaf pan that has the ceramic coating so like I said um, this is really the thing that sealed the deal for me I'm um, getting a, P a KBS and then also the fact that it had um, good reviews so let's see what is in we've got the oven mitt and let's see what's in this little package here Okay, so this is a measuring cup, um, a measuring spoon, which looks like it's a teaspoon and a tablespoon. I think they call this the hook, and I think the hook is used to get the paddle out of the bread if it's stuck up in the bread. I think that's what I read, but I'm not positive about that. And this is the paddle, and this paddle feels like it's metal and looks like it's like coated with the same ceramic coating so um i don't think it's plastic i think it's metal so it feels very heavy duty so this is what came in here okay so here is the the model that i chose and i'll find the model number and all of that stuff and leave that in the description box for you but a lot of the the ones that i've seen people um showing they don't have the actual buttons that you push. There's, you know, it's just a screen, um, a touch panel, I guess you would call it. And I really thought that I like the simplicity of the buttons, you know, start, stop. Um, this need button is something that I was really interested in because I believe that you can use this, like if you're making sourdough 
and you just want to knead your um, dough, you can use that button. So I, I like that, so that's why I chose this one. And then it also has 19 different settings. Um, I don't know what custom is, but I would assume that you can set some um, times and stuff on that one for how you wanted it to be. I really wanna try making yogurt in this and see how that works. The other settings that I really wanted, I wanted this natural sourdough setting and also uh, the leaven um, dough because I think that that is also can be used for sourdough and I definitely want to try to learn to make sourdough in the bread maker. You know, it just seems like it's really gonna be a time saver for those times that you really don't have time to fool with it, but you would like to have some homemade bread. So this is it. Here's the ceramic coated pan again. And let me show you, this is the, the paddle what it looks like up close. So it's definitely got some kind of coating on it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go get out the instruction book. <clears throat> Let me show you those too. Kind of up closer, we have a manual, which is pretty, pretty large. It's got a lot of information in it. And then a quick start guide. So I'm gonna go read these and I'm gonna pick out a recipe to do and come back and experiment with making some bread. So I will be back in a little while and we'll make some bread together. So I have read through both of these guides, the quick start guide and the user's manual. And I think that they're both really good. They really give you a lot of information. So this quick start guide um, takes you through real quickly, you know, the process of how to set your machine, the process for baking, kind of tells you how the machine works and it kind of gives you some tips. And then it gives you what they're calling a common formula for Western bread. And so I guess they're saying this is like your basic formula that you can use probably to make any kind of loaf. But in your user's manual, they give you an actual recipe for each of the different menu items. And so some of the machines have 17 um, different menu items and some of the KBS machines have 19. I'm not sure that the 19 one does any more than the 17 one does. I think they probably do the same thing but they do have a lot of different menu items for making different types of bread. So also the user's manual has a recipe in it for each one of those different menu items. The other thing that the quick start guide has in it is it has what they're calling a working program working timetable. And that is for each of the menu items also, but it actually takes you through the time and tells you what it's doing and for how long. Like, um, say the you know menu takes three hours, that particular bread takes three hours. Well, you can look on here and you can see how much of that time it is um, kneading your dough and then you can see that it is um, rising and then maybe it's doing something else and rising again. So you can see that on here. Now they're calling um, it fermentation when they're when it's actually the rising um, process. So it tells you some of them have one ferment, some have two, and some actually have three different ferments or rises. So that would be really helpful to know. I believe this would be really helpful to know if you had some special bread that you wanted to make and you knew like that it needed to rise more or less or whatever, you could find out which one of these settings would be more appropriate for what you want to do. And then also on mine, and I think probably on the other ones too, there's a custom setting. One of the menu items is custom and it tells you, I don't think it tells you in this, it tells you in your user's manual how you can set that custom one up to the way you want it to be. So you can tell it to knead for so long, ferment for so long, you know, um, knead again, ferment, bake, whatever. But all of those things I think are really, you know, it's, they give you a lot of information about the machine. I think if you read through all this, you kind of have a really good idea of how it works and um, 
how to use it to make bread. And then in both of these, I think it has like a question and answer section probably for the most asked questions. So today I'm going to use a recipe out of the user's guide. And the reason I'm going to do that is because when I was looking for machines, um, some of the comments were good, some of the comments were negative, but there was kind of um, not an agreement over the recipes in this guide. Some people said that they didn't work, that they weren't good, their bread didn't turn out. Some people said their bread turned out great. So for me, I decided for this initial video of, you know, um, opening up and using this machine that I really wanted to use a recipe out of the guide. So I'm going to use, it's the number one function and they're calling it soft bread. I think it's what they're saying would be like your regular sandwich bread. So this is the one I'm going to use. So they give you the recipe in grams and cups for some of the stuff and for some of the stuff it's not that way. Um, I am going to use grams because even though that's not the way I'm used to cooking, obviously, I think that their measurements in grams are most likely more accurate than their measurements in cups. So maybe the people who, you know, their bread was a failure, maybe they used the cup measurement and it wasn't quite right. So I'm going to measure my water and my flour in grams. They don't even give you gram measurements for all of the other things. Those things are all in teaspoons or tablespoons. So of course I'll be using those for that. So also I'm going to do the recommendations in the little, I think it's in the quick start guide. They recommend that you do um, the one and a half pound loaf. It's right in the middle. You know, there's a one, there's a one and a half and there's a two. And then they recommend that you do the medium for the um, darkness of your loaf. So that's right in the middle. Also, I assume that that's what they recommend so that you can decide whether you like that or not or whether you want it lighter or darker, bigger loaf, smaller loaf, whatever. It seems like a good starting point. So that's what I'm going to do since that's what the machine recommends. So I'm going to go ahead and get started making the bread. Okay, so a tip that my friend, I have a friend who has one of these machines and a tip that she gave me was to pour a little oil right over the little piece that the um, paddle fits over to help it from not getting stuck. So I'm just going to try to do that. Oops, I missed, but there. So I got some over it, might be a little extra oil. Hopefully that won't hurt anything. I'm going to make sure it's all over that really good. And I'm going to put that in. Now, so the directions for the order to put the things in is the liquid first. So I'm going to put my water in there. Okay, so it's the water the oil, which this recipe calls for butter. So let me grab my butter here. And it might be better if that wasn't one big clump, but it's super soft, so I think that it'll be fine. It'll mix, it'll mix up in the air. I'll cut it into a couple different pieces. And then our salt is gonna go in there. And that is a half of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so we have our water, salt, sugar, and butter in here. And the next thing to go in is going to be the flour. So let me see if I can get the flour in. And then on top of that, I'm going to put the milk powder, which I had to go to the store and get some milk powder because that was something that I didn't have. And this takes 
three tablespoons of milk powder. And then I also went out and got bread machine yeast because I had regular yeast, but I wanted to use what they recommended um, to, you know, give it a good shot for this first time and using the recipe out of this book. So the yeast is supposed to be two thirds of a teaspoon. So I'm just going to do a little bit less than a teaspoon because I don't have anything to measure two thirds. So I'm gonna put that right on the top. And that's all of our ingredients. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the bread maker. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here and there, it locks into place. That was pretty easy. And I'm gonna close it up, plug it in. And then, okay, it comes up. So I think this is where it's different than um, the others are in the controls. I think the machines do the same things. I think the controls are just a little bit different. But this comes up already um, pretty much like I think that it tells you to do. It's um, its own, um, oops, now I messed the menu up. Let's see, see if I can go through these and get back to menu number one. Okay, so it's on menu one, it's on the one and a half pound loaf, and it's on the medium for the bread color. So I think it's ready to go. So all I need to do is push this start button down here. So that's what I'm gonna do, and it says it's gonna take three hours and 11 minutes. And there it goes, let's, let's see what it's doing in here. And I'll try to come back and um, show y'all where it's at in the process. I also have a little, this didn't come with it, but I have this little soft spatula that I'm gonna try to use. Um, it did say something about checking it, I think after this first mix, um, to make sure that there's nothing stuck on the sides of the bread pan. And I think it also says stuff about, um, you know, it has a picture of how it should look and how it looks if it's too dry or how it looks if it's too wet. And you're supposed to watch it um, and make sure it looks right. And if it doesn't, then you add a little more flour or you add a little bit more water. So that was in one of the books, I think, I'm not sure which one. I really think bread machines are pretty amazing that that little bitty paddle can mix and knead your dough. The machine is not really that loud. Okay, I'm gonna close it up and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when this gets finished because I'm not really sure how long that's gonna take. Okay, so it cut off and this is what it looks like. And I think that looks pretty good. So I am just going to leave it alone and see what happens. And it does tell you that this doesn't stay lit up all the time, but you can just push a button and it'll come up and tell you where it's at. So now it's on 304. So that's how long. Oh, and look here, it tells us the first thing was stir. And then now, well, it was on rest, and now it's gone to the, the second stir um, setting. And then the one after that will be the first, um, well, what they call ferment or rise. So it's really kneading now. I think it was mixing before, and now it's really kneading. The dough. So I'll try to come back and show you what it looks like when it's finished with this. So remember what it looks like now. Okay, so you can push this menu button anytime you want this screen to light up so you can see where you are. It just finished that kneading that I had showed you 
and so now it's showing that it's on the first ferment which is the first rise and this is what it looks like so this is just starting it hasn't had any risen time it does feel like it's warming up in here a little bit for that rise and um, so if I catch it I'll show you what it looks like at the end of this um, but I'm not positive if I'll know when that is or not so you can see that there's also a second and a third ferment and then a bake but this recipe may not have those so this one may just have it may go straight from bake, um, fermenting to baking I'm not sure but we'll see so this recipe does have a second ferment and that's what it's doing now and um, then it's going to go straight into the void the um, bake mode at that point in time so here it is it's done and I can tell you that it smells amazing it smelled so good the whole time that it was baking and it's really hot but I'm going to try to go ahead and get it out of the bread maker and out of the pan so that you can see what the loaf looks like Now, if you notice that there's like a little indented place in the bread, I'm going to tell you that um, during that last ferment, somebody who I won't mention any names decided they needed to touch the top of the bread. And after the bread was touched, it kind of sunk there and got that little indention. But before that, it was beautifully rounded on the top. Now this nonstick ceramic pan works so amazing. The bread came out really, really easily and um, that was not a problem at all getting it out. So I was really happy with the pan and the nonstickness of it. And here it, um, it, it, it the, I really liked the color of it. I liked the way it turned out as far as the color. I think that was really good and that was the medium setting and the crust of this bread coming out is nice and crunchy so that is something that I like my whole family really likes the crunchy bread so there was not much of it left everybody ate it hot and loved it but the part that was left it did soften up and it lost that crunchiness of the crust it became more like um, a store-bought sandwich bread that you would buy as far as the softness of it and here it is here's the inside of it and it really just turned out really good so I think the recipe in the book for the soft bread if you follow that recipe and you use the bread flour which I'm gonna link for you the flour that I used and also the bread maker and anything else I think is important in the description box below. Thank you for joining me today in my kitchen. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope to be using my bread machine a whole lot more often and come up with a lot of new re bread recipes for you. So be sure and hit the subscribe and the notification so you'll be notified every time that I make a new video. And again, thank you for being here today and I will see you back again here next week.